Welcome to Technosis. There is a lot of very expensive gear on this table. And what I'm attempting to do in this video is set a world record for the DaVinci Resolve Puget Bench benchmark. We've got not just one, not just two, but three RTX 4090s. I've got the Threadripper Pro 5995WX from AMD. Then we've got this motherboard from ASUS. This is the WRX80 SC Sage Wi-Fi motherboard. And this is one of the best, if not the best motherboard, I think for this system. Then we've got some RAM from Team Group. This is the T-Create Classic 3200 mega transfers per second. This is 128 gigabytes, which will be plenty for this benchmark because we're not going to be capping that but probably one of the most important thing for this job is the power supply this is the seasonic prime px 1600 so it's a 1600 watt power supply because if we're having three rtx 4090s then we've got to have a lot of power to actually juice them and we're actually able to do it i think with just one power supply so let's see how that happens this video is sponsored by best buy and their top deals which are happening right now more about them in a moment but if you do want to check them out there's a link in the description below so i've got also three rtx 4090s in here we've got one from um asus tough actually there's two of these here asus send these over as well for some of the content so i'm going to put this in the first slot okay now I've got another three slots here to play with because this motherboard does have seven PCIe Gen 4 slots. They're all full fat X16 slots. So you could have a lot of them, but I only have one PCIe riser cable, Gen 4 riser cable, which means that this is not gonna be helpful. I'm gonna have to have at least two then we're going to start to see the actual benefit here. Uh, I do have a Gen 3 cable, so we'll see if we're going to get to that. But this bottom one, this I'm going to put in the very bottom slot because then that takes as much of the space from the bottom there as possible. So two cards are down there. And as you can see, there is a slot in here, but this is only two slots thick, which is why we have this. This is the MSI Supreme liquid cooled 4019 and the actual card is only two slots thick which will fit hopefully perfectly in between over there boom it's very very tight and i'm not sure how much airflow there is which we're going to actually help with some of the fans probably two of the best fans you can get the fantex t30 fans here So one in there, one in there. Let me add another one. The nice thing is these are like daisy chained together. So it's easy to just add fans. Okay, I've got one in the back there blowing into the cards and then these are gonna blow down the cards. I think that should be enough. Now let's put the power cables in here as well. By the way, this Seasonic power supply came um, with an extra, they sent an extra pack as well, where you've got three 600 watts, uh, 12 volts high power cables, basically like these, the 16 pin cables. They go two eight pin PCIe that connect to the power supply and then full 16 pin on the other side. So I can literally have only six eight pin PCIe power like slots occupied on the power supply, but then I can give power to all of these GPUs. Now it's time to plug in the power cable, which as you can see here is absolutely a big chungus of a power cable. It's much thicker than usual. I've actually started another camera recording the bottom of there where I can actually see the power wattage used how much does this system draw from the wall? So we'll see uh, what happens. Alrighty, moment of truth. Okay, fans go in, all of those fans go in. Okay, yeah, we're producing quite a lot of cool air there, so that should be fine. <laughs> what a construction here. But that should get us the world record. Let's see if we're gonna boot. Okay, moment of truth. Did they all show up? We've got only one. Hmm, okay. Okay, well voila, 
Windows just needed to do its thing. <laughs> Look at that. One, two, three, 40, 90s plugged in there. For some reason, it just didn't know like what was going on, but it figured it out. And that was quite simple, actually. So Best Buy and their top deals. If you don't know about them yet or you haven't checked them out, I highly recommend checking them out because there's so many reasons why you want to pick something up from Best Buy if you're looking for your next thing. Good customer service, good returns, good pricing, all sorts of things. Just checking the page right now, obviously there's lots of deals happening all the time. So whenever you see in this, I highly recommend checking out the latest in there because there might be some even better deals. But what I'm seeing right now is this here. If you don't know how to get there, you're gonna click on that top deals there and then it's going to take you to um, the top deals basic list. These are the deal of the day as well, which constantly changes. If you want to check that out, it's possibly there as well. I'm not sure if you're a member yet, but there's extra discounts for those Total Tech membership teams. But then on the sale there, what do we have? There's loads of different categories and I've picked some of my favorites that I can see. Also, a little tip for you how you can get the best deals when you're finding this is uh, pick the category, right? So if you go to the top deals, laptops, you pick your category and then click on the, the category, whether it's desktops or laptops or there's a little on the right top here, you can see shop desktop deals. I'm going to go shop laptop deals. Once you've clicked there, you can see all the laptops that are there and that are on the deal happening. What you want to do is first of all, go on the left side here and click that it is a new because there are some refurbished and Geek Squad like, you know, products there that have been repaired and things. So you don't want to put them in, but you can if you want to as well, because you can get big deals. What you want to do is go to sort by best discount and then you'll see all these laptops that are discounted the most by percentage um, what it looks like here as you can see this Chromebook is discounted more than 50% which is absolutely ridiculous, as you can see here. I've looked through this and some of the things that kind of poked my eye with the deals, and I thought, goodness me, these 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 look good. First of all, the one that you already saw, this Gigabyte Aero 16 4K a laptop. I don't know why they call it gaming laptop, even though this is actually, I think, a creator focused laptop or for creators. You can see 4070 Ti, one terabyte of storage, 12700H. That's an amazing CPU there. AMOLED screen, 16 inch. I mean, very, very good. And $950 off. That's ridiculous. There's Lenovo IdeaPad uh, Flex 5 here for someone who's, uh, you know, looking to do that type of thing. It's like a laptop and um, tablet all in one. This is $250 off from $699. There's the ROG Cephris 14 with Ryzen 7 and RTX 3060. $500 off, less than $1,000 from $1,400. Uh, here's the one with the Ryzen 9 and uh, Radeon 6900S. As you can see, $650 off. It's incredible deal. I know this is the last generation of Ryzen CPUs, but they still don't discount them. They are absolutely amazing, amazing CPUs there. Then we have LG Gram here. Very, very slim design laptop. If you're looking to just save space and absolutely have an awesome laptop, $600 off again. And then also I found this MSI Prestige. This is a 14 inch Evo laptop. Now it doesn't have dedicated graphics, but it's rather cheap there. And if you're looking to do maybe 2D creation and perhaps photo editing, this is pretty good because it has the i5-12440p 12 uh, CPU and I like the design. Then there's lots of PC components on sale. Um, you just pick a, whichever ones you want. You can see uh, GPUs, uh, CPUs. I didn't see that many GPUs, but I dare you to go check them out because maybe when you're watching this, there is some there. Motherboards, memory, power supplies, and um, storage. You scroll down and have a look which ones are your favorite. But some of the things that I did find were good was some of the obviously SSD deals here. As you can see, look at this SN850X, two terabyte for $150. That's a pretty crazy deal there. P3 for $45. PNY, one terabyte one for $41 there. So if you haven't got one yet, th there's crazy deals here. 980 Pro, two terabyte as well, $150. 990 Pro for $190 there. So check them out. But some CPU deals now, 13700K, $74 off. 3900K, $120 off. As you can see, this is cheaper than the 7950X now still. Again, discounted as well, $100 off. We've got 12900K, $401. 
slightly cheaper than the 13700K. We've got 13600K, $23 off. Every little helps, I guess. And because the summer season is starting, check out some of the outdoor deals as well there. Home and outdoor, you're looking for a barbecue, perhaps. Uh, some gardening jobs. I wish we had Best Buy here in the UK. Anyway, go check them out. Links in the description below. Thanks Best Buy for sponsoring this video. So if you take the likes of Octane Render here, where we can use every single one of those GPUs, let's see what happens. Okay, let's see if all of these GPUs get utilized. 100%. The second one. Ooh. I can start to feel a bit of warm air coming from here. Okay, GPU 1 is pulling 321 watts. GPU 2, <laughs> 248 watts. So basically, Task Manager doesn't know what the heck he's talking about. First is 350 watts, second is 320 watts, and the third one is 310 watts. And as you can see, our power consumption from the wall is 1273 watts. Now that's what I'm talking about. It's 25.5 degrees in this room right now. There we go, so you can see that as well. 56 degrees GPU 2, 55 degrees GPU 1. Okay, so I've got this uh, thermal camera from this uh, smartphone. This is AGM Mobile, and this actually has a thermal camera built into it over there, and I can see like hotspots here, 56, as you can see, some of this is see this is the warm tube you can easily see this where the warm tube comes in that one here warm tube and then cold tube goes back there yep you can see there there is warm gpu you can see the vrms there working away there 61 degrees vrms there not bad but here you can see the the fans and the heat sinks doing its job Let's have a look at this one there, 46 degrees on the thermal there. Let's have a look at the motherboard, 46. What about the power supply? 42 degrees there. Okay, there's a, a warm spot in there. You can see not bad, power supply is definitely doing its job. Yeah, you can see all of the GPUs here are at work. Number one there. 50 something 51 heatsink 41 very interesting come on let's see the benchmark results now okay so the highest score i have ever got on a single card on ectane bench is the msi rtx 1490 supreme x which was 1236 points whereas this one is getting 4000 points which were literally more than tripling the single card performance which is very very good so three cards would be maybe 3700 but we're getting 4000 points which means that the actual vram pulling together and all of that this works very interesting if we are going to the benchmark archive here and we're gonna go all dates now application davinci resolve system specs i'm gonna go with 5995 wx because that's the best cpu you can have for you know, DaVinci Resolve. So let's have a look at some of these scores here now. Let's see if we've got 7950X, if that is any higher. Standard overall 3000 there, very good. This one is almost 3000 there. Okay, this 7960X has got, 40, with a 4090, they got 31,000 and then 34,000 points. That is a really high score there. That's even higher score there. 3,800. Okay, the Fusion score is why they've got so high score there. Whereas the 4K media and 8K media isn't perhaps as high. DaVinci Resolve 18.5. So with no further ado, let's start the extended benchmark and let's see what happens. I'm gonna zero this as well. So I just wanna make sure that all cards get used before we start this. I'm gonna put the fans back on. Oh, 
Okay, we've got first test results. Extended overall score, 3,700. Did we reach a 4,000 points standard overall score? Now, all of these that I just found that I thought maybe I'm not gonna reach this, easily beat them. Obviously, fusion score is not as high, but fusion score is due to like single core performance, so I'm okay with that. So all of these, 3,700, 3,800 with the 7950X, check this out, 4,000 score. Okay, now, now I know that uh, the kind of a system works, right? And we're getting very high scores. So we're gonna see if we can beat that even more. I was checking the CPU and RAM. So RAM wasn't bottlenecked. The GPU gets used here and there. And then the RAM, we're maybe using up to 16 gigabytes or something like that. So for actual RAM, system RAM, we don't use that much. So I'm gonna close Task Manager. We're gonna save a little bit of CPU power and GPU power perhaps there as well. In terms of the CPU, looking at here, the package power, we were pulling 286. So it fully saturates all of the 64 cores or pulls all the wattage that it can. 64 watts, we're not thermal throttling. That's very good um, thermals. Plus, bear in mind, we've got 26 something uh, degrees in the room here. 57 degrees on the GPU zero. 340 watts pulled from the socket. 330 watts pulled from the socket. And 232 watts from the, uh, from the actual GPU. 443 degrees, 51 degrees, 57 degrees. Interestingly, GPU one seems to be the hottest, I guess it does make sense there, but I'm gonna close the hardware monitor now as well. And I'm gonna close the Chrome as well. So now nothing else is open in the background. Now everything's going, let's try this again. I'm just looking there, we're pretty much idle and we're pulling 321 watts from the actual socket. Okay, um, we've finished another benchmark there. And you can see we've reached 4,100 as a standard overall score. We got Fusion score over 400 now as well. So that is very, very good. But there's a few more things that we could do. So I'm gonna close that one. Let's have a look if there's anything open in the background that we don't want. Okay, we've got some Armory Crate. Let's have a look, CPU. And Google Chrome be gone. What we'll do is we'll go to MSI Afterburner and let's see if we can reach the power limit to 133 on all of these cards, okay? So if they want to draw more power, well, be my guess because you can do that, okay? And then let's see if, first of all, if this actually works. So 133. I've got Fermac here. All of the GPUs, one, two, three, there. GPU stress test. Let's see what happens. Okay, look, all of the GPUs. Is it using only one? Yeah, if you look, the TDP is 124% of TDP, but it's only using one of these, which is the very bottom one here. Look at that. GPU power, we're pulling 550 watts. Woo, woo, woo. Okay. Definitely works. 850 watts pulled from there. So we're gonna close that one. I'm gonna leave this hardware info now open because I wanna record how much power we're actually gonna be pulling. So let's do extended benchmark now and let's see if overclocking the cards actually makes sense. Oh my goodness. Okay. So look at that. 4,000. 13. Let's have a look at 4300. Okay, GPU effects 561. Oh, yeah. So it looks like the uh, limiting the power or pushing the power up actually did make a difference. So let's have a look what happens here. A GPU won 4090. We pulled 494 watts. Uh, GPU 2. Oh, a bit conservative. 339 and GPU 3 429 watts. Let's see the temperatures still seem completely fine at 50 degrees or something like that. I'm gonna close that and let's see if we can get it even higher now. One last time now. 40.13 to beat now. Let's go. Alrighty. So um, I think we did. 
reach a little bit higher score than before. Yep. 4,430 now. Okay, we're getting a little bit better there, as you can see. Now, there is a few more things that we can do. Now, I have one Gen 3 and Gen 4 riser cable. What we could do is add another RTX 4090 with Gen 3 in there. Now, that means that I'm going to have to pull another power supply in there because we're running out of juice on this one. But I think we can get it a little bit better. So, uh, let me just, you know, do that. Okay, um, the uh, orchestration is done here. As you can see, there is four cards now. One, two, three, and four. So the TUF and the Supreme are directly connected on the motherboard. Then we've got this Gigabyte Gaming OC, just literally standing on top of the <laughs> heatsink of the CPU cooler. And then another 1490 TUF is here on the floor. But because we didn't have enough power, I'm running the Xeon 3475X test bench setup here with the W79E Sage Wi-Fi here because that one had already the MSI AI1300P uh, power supply, which has the 600 watt 12 volt power adapter for the new GPUs, which now everything is set up. Now we're going to hit turn on for those because the Xeon is already on. So that card is already getting power because the power supply is on. And then now let's hit the power button. Okay, fan spinning there, fan spinning there, fan spinning there. Okay, all the fans are spinning. Yes, come on, we got the boot. Okay, let's see if we can get to the boot, to Windows. Come on, give us a Windows. Come on, yes, give us that Windows logo. Boom. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, there is four RTX 4090s plugged in now. One, two, three, four, yep. I'm not even going to do it without my GPU power limit. Let me just double check. Settings, one, two, three, four, yep. Let them all go past their whatever power limits and temps high as well. I want to do a quick benchmark to actually see if all of the cards are ramping up as well. So you can see Octane Bench here. We've got four RTX 1490s now. I'm sorry if I'm a little bit hidden behind those. Let's see if we can turn it that way. There we go. 350 watts from GPU 4. 313 to 313, 330. Yep, we are pulling that much. Um, for, just for the laugh, I'm gonna let it complete this benchmark. Oh, <gasps> look at that. 5,315. That is absolutely ridiculous. I'm gonna upload it just so that people can see and this is what I have done. Now we know that these cards are working because we can see maximum power was 370 on one card, 340 on one card, so all cards get load, 304 or 35, and 360 roughly there. Let's go. So I completed the test now with four of these, okay? And looks like we're not actually getting a higher score I'm gonna do this again just to make sure that, but looks like with three RTX 4090s directly connected there, we're uh, getting a better score. Okay, we've completed it again and looks like We've only got 38,000. We didn't reach 4,000 this time. Now, I've got one more theory now. Because the third gen card or third gen 4090 is on the second slot, I'm going to swap the cards around a little bit so that I can have the third gen in the last slot. Just because maybe DaVinci Resolve uses the GPUs like consecutively. 
so that, you know, which one is in the front, second, third front, so it might mess up a little bit of this going from fourth gen, third gen, back to fourth and back to fourth. So I'll do a little swap and then see if that makes a difference. So, no matter how much I try now, I can't seem to get past my previous score. I've tried different configurations off camera, um, moving these around, putting different, you know, riser cables, different slots, different uh, configurations. 4,430 on standard overall score seems to be the highest I can reach. This is absolutely ridiculous. As you can see, it all goes downhill from there. And you might be saying, look, this is a ridiculous uh, configuration and no one can actually use this in a case. I will show you, hopefully in a build, how we can do this as well. But if you do have these liquid-cooled RTX 1490s, like the Supreme gear or this one from Gigabyte as well, then you can literally mount these in your case either in the back of the case because some of these latest cases have 240 millimeter rad support in the back of the case as well which this will fit in perfectly and then you can have two of these because these are only two slot cards maybe 2.1 or whatever so you can literally populate three or even four of them almost in the motherboard which is absolutely doable just depends if you do have rad support so you can cool all these cards down but it is completely possible to do and davinci resolve is one of those programs that scales really well and by adding more gpu power we actually do get better performance not like premiere pro which actually is only marginal uh, increase so if you want to pick up any of these cards i'm going to try to leave everything in the description below but uh, you might want to take out a mortgage or sell a few of your organs for sure to get this stuff but i'm super grateful that we get to play with some of these so thanks AMD, Asus, MSI, Intel, whoever, Kingston, Team Group, whoever has lent some of these parts so we can do this. But if you do want to build yourself the best bank for about create a PC, then check out the build guide in the video description below. There's four videos out there. There's budgets for all the people out there. So pick the budget that's close to your budget and then just configure everything from there. Downgrades, upstairs, everything is explained there. Go check it out in the video description below. Thanks guys for watching. Bye-bye.